Hi everyone, Kieran over Sapping from Filmstorm Studios and today we're going to look at how to create photogrammetry and really, really nice models. So what I've done is I've downloaded this software called Agisoft's PhotoScan and we've got the trial version here. And what you can actually see is I've gone ahead and created um, this really nice tree and all I need to do, um, or, well, all I had to do was just go outside and take some photos just moving around the tree. Didn't use any fancy cameras or anything, I just used my iPhone. And as you can see, these are the kind of pictures that I've taken just walking around the tree and just capturing, I think it was about 36 photos. And I just made myself go all the way around. And then it basically is just a process of um, the program aligning the photos in a circle and it automatically does that you don't have to worry about trying to align stuff and then um, just creating the model and the texture um, and basically what I forgot to do on the day I didn't have a big selfie stick so I couldn't like hold my camera um, do another pass going like around up here to capture the leaves so I'll have to make sure I do that for my next my next test um, but I reckon that's gonna work really well and as you can see the detail is off the chain here we've got really really nice um, results coming in it looks really nice and it's even picked up all the ground texture which I thought was um, a, an added bonus so and I've actually learnt this technique through um, G at a GDC talk from uh, I think it was Star Wars Battlefront and they had a really, really um, interesting perspective of going in, just capturing all of their assets. They went out to the desert, to the snow, and they walked around and then did all this photogrammetry, even on like massive environments and stuff. It's really, really interesting. I'll put the link in the description so you can have a, a watch of it. But you're probably interested to know how we got to um, we got to make this, and I'll show you what happens once we've exported that into Maya. I kind of did this quick little uh, sequence moving around and you can see um, this is the actual scene and the detail is really nice in Maya as well and of course this is um, no bump maps either and then I exported that rendered it and then we got this really really nice sequence and we got heaps of nice detail I put some I, when I rendered it I had the depth of field on and you get really really nice um, really nice effects. So let's have a look at how we actually go about creating uh, something like this. Um, so let's jump, let's create a new scene in Maya. Let's jump into Agisoft and let's create a new scene in here. Let's discard that. All right, we want to right mouse click on the workspace and add a chunk. And now we want to right mouse click on the chunk and add some photos. And right here I've got my rock that I went around and did the same thing, 360 pictures. And when I import that, you're going to see it kind of just puts these pictures anywhere, no real order to them. So you want to right mouse click on the chunk and say process align photos, have it at high and have it disabled, nothing really crazy in advanced, just leave it like that. And then click OK. So it's going to run through and automatically align all of the photos and make it um, kind of do the 360 movement that we did. And it basically does this by detecting the points in the pitches and matching them together with that slight offset. So that's how we can um, adjust the position. So I'm gonna let this finish. It's gonna take about a couple of minutes and then I'll unpause it and then we'll continue. Alrighty, so the processing is finished and as you can see, we've kind of been left uh, with this kind of view and you can see that it's worked quite nicely. And this is kind of what I did. I kind of moved around the subject and you can see that it's done a really nice job of creating uh, this nice point cloud and this gizmo sometimes gets a bit out, out of order but you can see that you can see a rock there which is really really nice so what we want to do now is actually create the model and if you don't see this general outline what you can do is come in here say process and build a denser mesh and then that will um, really process the photos that will take probably about 50 minutes because it really really pushes the the photos if you're having trouble um, with your captures and you've got an iPhone um, this is just from my case what you might need to do is download um, like Adobe Lightroom or Profoto and with those apps you can actually use um, raw um, images so it captures just raw DNGs and it's really um, nice and it helps 
uh, with the processing of the photos because there's just that much more information for the program to work with. But in our case, this looks really nice. I didn't have raw photos for these ones. These were just straight JPEGs. I did it in um, broad, um, broad daylight, so it, it was really good quality. And so what we can do in this stage is go process and build mesh. mesh. And I've got arbitrary and then medium 30,000 face count. And bam. So now we've got our really, really nice quality rock. So that looks really nice. And what we can do now is go right mouse click process and create a texture. And this was from my other test. Uh, we might need to bring up the calculator just so I can divide this back down. So we can go 16384 uh, divided by 2 and then divided by 2. I just can never remember the, the 4K texture um, size. So here we go. We've got 4K texture, generic mosaic, 4K. Don't worry about um, anything advanced, just keep hole filling on and click OK. Now it's going to go and grab all of our photos and kind of project the texture onto that mesh, which is going to be really nice and you'll see the result in a second. It's just blending them all together. And it's almost there. It's probably just doing the final blend. And voila, there is our really, really nice textured rock. And look at the detail um, on this without any normal maps um, or basically anything. So that that looks really, really nice. And you'd probably never get textures like this unless you actually spend some time um, really, really building it and creating layers and everything. And trust me, I've, I've tried. <laughs> Um, or you had like a, a massive team, but this would save you heaps of time in your development. So look at how nice that is, and it's even grabbed all these little leaves and everything kind of bundled into the corners. So that looks really, really nice. So now I can show you what would happen if we were to import this into um, Maya. Um, I haven't really figured out the actual coordinate system. I'm sure there's a way to reset it in um, Aggiesoft, but I'll show you for the time being. So we want to expand this, get our 3D model and export it. Let's come to our rock. Let's just call this 3D model. And we're just going to call this rock uh, real. Um, so what I mean is there's probably some system that we have to change in here. If, if you know, let me know because it would be really handy. But at the moment when you import into Maya, it kind of throws it off, way off um, into the world and then you have to bring it back to zero, zero, zero. I mean, I thought that if you have this at zero, 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 it would reset, but um, I'm wrong. So um, you can tell me if you know. So let's go to Maya. Let's go file and import that one. And let's go to the Dropbox into the rock 3D model and grab this rock. All right, so now you can see that it's off in whoop whoop somewhere. So let's come here. Way I figured to do it is just drop a plane down, control click these two, press F, it will focus them. Grab this, um, oh, you need to then just center, uh, edit, oh, modify, center the pivot to that um, object, hold V to snap it and then just snap it back to the middle of the scene and there, there you go so we've kind of fixed that problem and then we just it's just a matter of um, making it straight to the world alright let's just straighten this up bring that up and it does a really good job there was even like a little slant here when I was um, when I was doing it alright so let's delete that plane underneath and let's just turn down that shading, that specular color. And I'll press 6. And voila, there is our high quality rock inside of Maya. Of course, you can go and um, do your mesh optimization to reduce the poly count, but that can be a different tutorial. And I'm sure you, you can probably figure out how to do that yourself if you need to. But all of that detail is really really nice and you could probably um, create some sort of tools to help blend um, like what you want to do and you can come in paint uh, your vertexes or something if you want paint them out delete them if you're not a fan of having all this other stuff 
um, or you could go and uh, do it in the other program. You could even just come in here and just annihilate all of these um, these different parts. But I'd probably recommend uh, doing that in inside of um, Agisoft. You can just come in here and then just work your way around the mesh and then just uh, remove these little bits if you don't if you don't want the, the ground and then just tidy that up inside Maya. So you'd probably want to be a bit more careful. I just took out that, that corner there. So yeah, but this has been a really nice little quick look at creating high quality models in like super, super quick time, time frames. Imagine trying to model this texture. It would take you about a couple of hours, I reckon, the full process. And we did it in a, probably about like 20 minutes or so. I'm not sure what the, the, the time count for this is. But um, yes, I'll put this model and that tree model up on filmstorm.net so you guys can go and um, download them and have a play with, you, with them. And I'll also put the source files for the tree and the rock as well, which are the, the 360 pan around so you can have a go as well. And I'll also put a link to Aggiesoft's photo scans trial in the description so you can have a look. So in the description, you'll be able to see the Star Wars Battlefront GTC talk, um, Aggiesoft's trial, my two source files for the tree and the rock and the, the two high quality models for the tree and the rock as well. So thank you so much guys for watching this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time.